for number one, we call this a probability model as long as all the individual probabilities are in between zero and one, with zero meaning it is impossible for the event to occur, and one meaning it is guaranteed that the event will occur. In addition, all the individual probabilities should add up to one when you sum them together. So this is a probability model because it sums to one and all the probabilities are greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. And brown would be an impossible event because its probability is zero. For number two, a valid probability for an event is anything in between zero or one. So list all the numbers that are in between zero or one. Zero meaning it's possible to occur and then one meaning it's guaranteed and then everything in between is a valid probability. The closer it is to one, the more likely it is to happen. The closer it is to zero, the less likely the event is to happen. The sample space means all the possible outcomes. So the outcomes here are the numbers one through eight. So maybe we place the numbers one through eight in a hat and we're gonna draw one number out. So what's the probability that we draw a two, a four, a seven, or an eight? So there's four things that can make this true. There's eight total numbers in the hat. So we have a four out of eight chance, which as you reduce four out of eight, it reduces to one half. For number four, we have a hundred bulbs in a bag and we're gonna randomly select one. And we wanna know the probability that a randomly selected bulb is yellow and there are 40 yellow bulbs out of the total 100. So our probability is 40 out of 100 and as you reduce that down, the probability is reduced to a two-fifths chance that you will randomly select a yellow bulb out of the bag. Here we have survey results, and based on these survey results, we're going to find the probability of each of these responses. I found it easy to copy this to the clipboard and paste it in Excel. So then you can take the frequencies and sum them up to see how many total students participated in the survey. And then to find the probability, you just want to take the number of occurrences. So for never, you would do 138 and divide by the total. So if you do 138 divided by 4913, you get the probability of someone responding never. And then for rarely, you do 323 divided by 4193, the total, and you get the probability for someone responding rarely. And do that for all of them. And you can enter those in the chart they don't add up perfectly to one because of the rounding they'll be very very close 0.99 but when you do round sometimes you won't get perfectly to one because you need to round would you consider it unusual to find a college student who never wears a seatbelt when riding in a car by someone else and yes you would because that's a very low probability it's less than five percent we have for this problem, there are four employees at a company, Roberto, Marco, John, and Dominique, and we want to pick two of them to send to a conference. So you want to list for the sample size all the possible combinations of two of those people. And it can be helpful to make a list where you pick one person you're going to start with, so Roberto, and then list him with all the different people. He could be with Marco, John, or Dominique. And then when you move on to the next person, Marco, you can ignore Roberto now. We've already listed all his combinations. So the only possible pairs he can be with that are different are John and Dominique. And then when you move on to the next person, John, you can ignore both Roberto and Marco. And the only person left to pair John with then is Dominique. And you don't even need to make a column for John Dominique because he's already been paired with everybody in our previous listings. So we have those six options for our sample space. Those are all the possibilities. The probability that Marco and John attend the conference would be that happens with one of those six. So we have a one out of six chance if it's all equally likely to pick any of these possibilities. Our chances we get this one is one out of the six. The probability that our Roberto will attend happens three out of the six times. 
So three out of the six have an R in it for Roberto, so the probability he will attend is three out of six, which reduces to one half. For number seven, we've rolled a six-sided die, so a normal die. We've rolled it 400 times and recorded how many times each value showed up. And a die is completely random, so you would expect roughly an equal number of of each result occurring. So an equal number of ones, twos, threes, four, five, and six. They won't be perfectly equal, but the numbers will be close, kind of like all these numbers are close to each other, and the three is close too. But this die seems odd because two of the numbers are showing up way more than the others. The probability of getting a one and a two are both way higher than they should be. It's not a fair die. So yes, because two of the values have a higher probability of occurring, we think this die is loaded.